Hello, Galaxy. I'm Chris Perillo, and I'm going to start this by saying something very controversial. And no, it's not iOS versus Android. Who's the winner? There is no winner, okay? Just FYI. You know, there's one that's better for you, potentially, but that's not what's controversial. Uh, the most controversial thing I'm, I'm going to say is what I just, whatever I just said. What was that? I tripped through the sentence. Uh, is uh, <laughs> Android Oreo ran very well, much more fluidly uh, as a platform on my Nexus 6P, a device that's a couple years old, compared to iOS 10 and 11 on my iPhone 7 Plus and my iPhone 8 Plus. So I wasn't intending on talking about this right now. In fact, in last night's live stream, if you're not watching the daily live streams, head over to youtube.com slash locker gnome, turn on the notifications, TLDR is happening there, AMA every day, you can ask a question that has nothing to do with what you hear me talking about right now, um, and, and that's the other channel, so it's primarily for live videos. Uh, I, I was thinking I'd wait until I got the new Google device that's set to be announced this week, and then I thought, wait, this is a software comparison. I'm talking about the software, and if I can you know, talk through my experiences with this and, and tell you that I find Android to run better on older hardware than iOS to run better on newer hardware, I think this is actually a pretty decent example. Uh, keep in mind, though, um, this is just my experience. Everyone's got different experiences, and if you experienced Android five years ago, it's different from what you experienced, even even from, from a year ago. I'm not saying Android Oreo improved everything, but you know I, I've always been more of a software purist, and so I've always appreciated what Google's laid out with its Nexus program, with its Pixel program, uh, that pure Android experience. That's what drives me and, and drives my interest. Uh, to me, the hardware is is like the platter. And the software is the food on top of the platter. Now, when you, you get handed the platter, do you admire the platter? Yeah, it's a pretty nice platter. But then do you eat the food? The food is the important part of the, the platter food arrangement. I mean, you, you eat the food off the platter if you want. Like, eh, it's like eating your apps. It's, that's not, not how I necessarily eat food off of, of platters. I mean, maybe. I don't have bread to sop up the gravy, but I'm just saying that the food is the software. I'm more of a software guy. So this is a... It, it's simply a software showdown. Uh, my raw experiences, and I'm doing this to better inform people because I keep seeing over and over and over again, especially with recent conversations, people suggesting that Android is janky. But I'm sitting here telling you that my experience has been just the opposite of jank for the most part. There has been some jank in Android. It's, it's, it's not you know gone yet specifically in older hardware, but it's gotten better. And, and that is also in comparison to iOS. And I feel that people are, you know, relying on an outdated uh, uh, viewpoint that iOS is best in class for mobile uh, platforms. I will tell you this is another controversial uh, thing that I'm going to throw out there. Uh, I don't believe iOS is best in class. I, I'm not going to argue if, if the iPhone is best in class in terms of hardware but in, in, or in experience out, outright right now. But uh, uh, the software iOS is definitely not best in class. I believe that Google Android uh, Oreo is. And that's largely been based on recent experiences, specifically with about my only Android experience that I've had for the past two years on the uh, the, the Nexus uh, uh, 6P. I think I said 6P, right? This, this one. <laughs> of course that is. What, you, what did you think it was? Um... So that shows you how much I care about the hardware. I, ju I just don't. Didn't use this, you know, a, a great deal, as many uh, of you out there have, have. You've run it into the ground, and in fact, apparently, that can be an issue for Android devices. It, the silicon could become unglued, and then everything gets hot, and everything slows down. I never had that issue with the, the, the 6P outright. Never really had that issue with, what was it, the 5X? Or even the, the Nexus 4? That was like my first favorite Android device. Remember that? Remember when I dropped the thing on it? And it like the screen shattered in that video? God, what video was that? God, it was so long ago. But it, it, to me, there's a myth that Android is laggy and iOS isn't. It's a myth. 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 Yes? No, it just doesn't work. You gotta be a Muppet in order for that to work. Uh, I, I, I want to like just basically you know knock some sense into the people who say that. I'm not saying that Android isn't laggy, but you also can't say that iOS isn't. You know, they both have issues in, in a different way, but I feel that, that Android is now outpacing uh, the performance of, uh, of its platform on various devices compared to iOS, which isn't, uh, on its devices, you know, uh, the iPads and, and, and iPhones. Um, and, of course, your experiences may be different as well, depending on what you've done and what you see, but I'm just, I'm just telling you as I see it. And I, I think this is very... Um, 
eye-opening, potentially, for people who don't realize just how bad it is with iOS. And you don't realize how bad something is until you see how good it is elsewhere. And, and that's all the more reason why you never want to get trapped into the myopic uh, approach of you live in this camp and this camp alone and, and nothing else is better. That's very dangerous, when, especially when it comes to technology. Uh, the only way you want, the uh, only way, the only time you want to say, like, this is it, and this is the only best thing, and there's no other best thing than this, and this is never going to get better than this, is if it's Star Wars. That's it. <laughs> but if it's tech, you can't do that. It's not how technology works. It's how Star Wars works. <laughs> Being a little facetious. Uh, then, the, you know, there's someone in the comments going, what's Face Tyus? So, uh, <laughs> it's a spelling joke. It's a grammar nerd j joke. Uh, I am looking to get uh, the, the new Google flagship, uh, the new Pixel, uh, as it's set to be released this week. Very excited about that. Um, uh, you know, I, uh, I, uh, I want it. I do want it. I want it more than I, I wanted the iPhone 8 because I knew it was coming down the pike. I, I had attenuated my expectations that much, but from what I've seen with Android Oreo on uh, the 6P, you'll have to pardon the brief pause. The iPhone 8 Plus, which I'm using right now to record this video, just stopped recording the video. For whatever reason. Anyway, as I was saying, I'm not showing you both devices because I'm using one. I'm not joking. It really did happen, legitimately. In fact, I don't know if my white balance is the same as it was before. Uh, I'm using the iPhone 8 Plus to record the video, and I've got the, uh, the 6P right here. Uh, so most of my comparisons uh, that I've, I've been, you know, seeing or that I'm going to be talking through with you uh, are, are going to be spoken about, not necessarily demonstrated outright. You've got to see it for yourself. That's the thing. And that's the one thing that I've learned, especially in doing comparisons. Like some people don't see the problem on, on either side. So you've got to see it for yourself. You really do. And it's it's reminiscent of um, uh, the, uh, uh, the first iPhone uh, having uh, never seen anything better than what we had. The iPhone, the first iPhone, the best iPhone ever, showed us something that we never had before. Uh, I don't think the same is, is true with the iPhone 10. They said, well, how can you pass judgment on the iPhone 10? You haven't seen it. I'm like, yeah, I'm a software guy. I can see software at a distance. I'm good. I'm okay. So, uh, uh, you know, you didn't realize how bad it was until you had something better. And that's what I want to convey. There is something better than iOS for certain types of experiences. I don't intend on dropping iOS necessarily. Sometimes I want to drop kick it. Uh, but uh, uh, especially when it stops recording a video in the middle of recording a video, uh, I swear it, do it knows it knows what I'm doing. It knows. It legit knows, which is kind of freaky. So, <laughs> I'm being face Tyus again. Facetious. Look it up. So uh, I'm not going to drop iOS. If only to stay, as I've mentioned in comments, uh, uh, a bit more uh, objective. Um, I care about software, not hardware, and to recognize software gains, you need to run it on hardware considered contemporary. I'd rather have one iOS device and one Android device for the time being for balance. But of course, it, it may grow into two Android devices and three Android devices. Or I don't know. Um, but I, I do have these things written down, and I wrote down the notes because I wanted to talk about them. So, uh, knowing that pretty much all I care about is software, and this software showdown, uh, one of the first, uh, you know, uh, stark contrasts that I see between how iOS manages something and how uh, Android Oreo manages something, or just Android versus iOS, notifications. Notifications on iOS are a mess. Uh, they have been since 10. So they will be throughout 11. Uh, they may get better in 12. We don't know. Nobody knows. All we know is what we've had in the past. And what I can tell you this uh, is, or what I can tell you is this, uh, notifications are an absolute nightmare to manage on, on current iterations of iOS. Uh, versus current iterations, which are about development-wise, you know, about as early on as they get um, on, on either side. Uh, you don't realize how bad iOS notifications are until you see how Android manages notifications, specifically on, on, on a, a basic Android device, a clean Android experience. It's just, it's elegant. It's just breathtakingly simple and clean and useful and usable. Oh, it's just, it is very difficult to shift between Android notifications and iOS notifications. And it got, like I said, it got worse. iOS 11 is, is borderline unusable. Notifications, I've been turning off notifications in so many apps because like, I, can't, I, just, it's, I can't use this. Like if they all get lumped together and then you press the X and sometimes the X works and sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes text overflows over the bubble for the notification because iOS thought it would design notifications that way. I think it was starting in 10, which I think was a step backwards. Um, but then you, you tap the X and not only do the, all the notifications below it for the past, 
X hours disappear, but sometimes the notifications above it clear out too. And then sometimes the notifications above it don't clear out. And then you got like 74 notifications above that X that you, you can't clear out at the top because there's no X at the top of those notifications on iOS. So you got to swipe through each one. On Android, everything is organized. It's clean. It's simple. Animation doesn't jank on on an older device that apparently is not even the best device that that Android's ever run on certainly uh, not Android Oreo but uh, it's it's night and day difference and i use notifications it's it's it, when you're faced with a prospect of of pain in using a software feature you have to recognize that, that software feature is not working for whatever reason and this is not about uh you know saying demonstrably android is just better it's just by and large, a fantastically better experience. I would be shocked if anybody could say otherwise, apart from those in the camp like, no, it's Apple's way or nothing. Uh, okay, I, I know where you stand. I also know what I see. And, and as, as someone who loves organization and cleanliness uh, and, and, and being able to use software specifically for what it was designed to do, uh, Android has definitely got it over uh, iOS for, for notifications. Uh, notification center's a mess on iOS. And you don't realize how bad it is until you see it on something else. In terms of uh, multitasking... Uh, I find that I, I, I can get in and out of apps with less jank in uh, Android Oreo than I can with uh, uh, iOS 11 on the iPhone 8 Plus. Um, you've got, of course, the software button, the little square button that's at the bottom of the screen that will effectively allow you to tap, and then you can scroll through. Uh, not a lot of frame drops there, if any, uh, that I ever picked up outright, um, you know, compared to double tap sometimes and you can miss tap and no, you got double tap okay no not triple tap I, I didn't mean to lock the device okay just double tap um swipe swipe drop frame drop frame drop frame drop frame okay uh, that's what i want um you've got a different layout of course you're going from horizontal layout and ios versus vertical so that just comes down to a matter of taste um but the uh, uh, uh the fluidity on on uh, the the nexus 6p with oreo has been fantastic uh, moreover it's much faster to switch between two apps like you ever do that you're like i need to go between my web browser and the you know, other uh, app that i'm using on android you just double tap the uh, uh the that oh, that icon the task switching icon the, the square button at least i think it's square yes memory served me correctly i think just but yeah okay just making sure, because if I went the whole, through the whole time mentioning the square and it wasn't the square, oops. Um, so uh, it was just faster. You can you can go right back and forth between those two apps, like boom, boom. It's not as clean as it could be because it jumps you to your, your home screen first and then into the other app, but it's just like bam, bam, and then you're in the other app, like boom, boom. So in terms of task switching, no doubt about it, like so much faster. And you could argue, well, I, I double tap and then I tap and then I double tap and then I tap. And it's like, yeah, but it's not as double tap, like double tap the square, that's it. Like double tap, then tap. So it takes more time, more effort, more energy, more gesture to uh, do the same thing on iOS. And then plus you're also dealing with the uh, frame rate uh, issues on iOS as well. And specifically on, 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 on newer devices like the iPhone 8 Plus. Uh, so yeah, definitely multitasking is handled in a better way on uh, on, on Android at this point. This is not to say that if you overload Android with a ton of things going on that it's not going to bog down and not going to be able to manage things as effectively. I'm talking specifically about just workaday, you know, average. I'm just doing things as I normally do, you know, not taxing the system necessarily. Uh, it's it's a cleaner experience on, on Android. It's a quicker experience, demonstrably. I can do it in boom, boom, versus boom, 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 boom. Easy. Uh... See that I, I didn't have to show it to you. I just it just narrated it, and I know some of you are probably just sitting back there going, "Yep, yep, this is what I'm saying. This, this is exactly what I'm saying." And everybody else is like, "What? That's impossible." Uh, next, I was going to talk about a fingerprint sensor. Now, not necessarily the hardware, although that is something to talk about, which is different across the board. So I can't really get into that, though. I do know that it is far more convenient for me to use the front-facing uh, Touch ID sensor versus a back, uh, or back-sided, uh, back-sided, uh, the, the rear-facing uh, fingerprint sensor. Um, although, the fingerprint sensor on, on uh, the Nexus 6P and, and other Android devices allows you to do this, and you can swipe down your notifications. So you can see your notifications just by, just by swiping down. So you can use that uh, sensor button for any something more than just you know unlocking the phone. But in terms of speed, I found it to be just as fast to unlock the device with a fingerprint on the Nexus 6P as I did unlocking the device with my fingerprint on the uh, iPhone 8 Plus. Just as fast.
maybe in some cases faster, sometimes slower, but just seem to be like negligible in terms of speed, which shocks me. Again, we got a newer device, a newer, allegedly newer Touch ID sensor. It's, it's I think, the second iteration of the current version um, versus the, the fingerprint sensor that they're using in the 6P. But in terms of speed, unlocking, found it to be faster or just as fast on uh, Android. In terms of consistency and navigation, so yeah, on Android, you got those software buttons typically now. Uh, you've got a square at this point, a circle, and then the triangle. The triangle is the back button, which some people who love Android love the back button. They need the back button. I'm not necessarily a back button fan. In fact, in Google Play on Android, probably one of the worst Android apps ever. You'd be surprised. It is, like in terms of performance, not good. And you'd expect better from Google, Google Play, this being their app store. Like it's, it's not pretty. Like you can see so many dropped frames in, in Google Play. It's bad. Uh, but uh, uh, it's got a back button at the top. And then that, of course, the software back button is permanently there. So then you're kind of confused. Like, well, how do I go back? Like on iOS, there's no back button. You know, you want to get back to the home screen, you tap the button, you're back to the home screen. Um, of course, you've got the home button on, on Android. But uh, on iOS, if you didn't realize, you can swipe to go back uh, like a page in inside an app. And I'll do that all the time. Like I'm, I'm one, uh, one level deep and just swipe to go back, swipe to go back. Uh, it's easy. It's clean. It's simple. It's, it's wherever it is on the screen. So I think Android could improve by adopting that kind of gesture. And that's where I feel that there's more consistency with back in iOS than there is with Android. With Android, it's a mixed bag because Android is trying to play to the to every every denominator. Like, well, the user may not have this button. They need that there. And they may not have that button. So they need this here. So, you know, there's an issue specifically with how Google's, uh, you know, tried to mitigate that, that I don't see as much in, in iOS. So in terms of consistency and navigation, I do believe that um, iOS definitely is handling it better than, uh, than Android. And, and I swipe back all the time, so it's, it's an issue. Not that I can't use the back button, but man, if, I'm, if I'm up here and I need to go back, I go to a down here versus just going, you know? So it's, these are the small things that just add up, right, for either, either one of the platforms or any platform. Uh, in terms of app exit to home screen speed, I have found that I can get from point A to point B on my Nexus 6P faster than I can on iOS. iOS almost seems to be slow uh, in, in trying to keep up with what it is that I want to do. Either I have to wait for an animation or jumping back, uh, and I have reduced motion turned on. You know software experience is bad when you have to turn on reduced motion on iOS. Not reduce, reduced transparency, that, in, that increases the amount of fugly. Um, but reduced motion mitigates some of the, the frame rate inconsistencies with animations on iOS. Uh, but it, 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 it's slower to sometimes do things on iOS than I, than I know I can do on uh, Android Oreo on my Nexus 6P. Uh, I can get two things quicker, and it just jumps right away. In fact, there is a feature you can turn on in developer options in uh, Android. It has been for some time that you can you know, change animation speed, and you can even turn it off like altogether, uh, which is great. Like If you just want to... You can. And uh, so, you know, you find one that, that suits you, a speed that suits you if it's not the default. Uh, so there's at least that, that level of granular control, which, you know, I've, I've certainly appreciated. But even with the default animation speed, I find that I'm able to maneuver multitask inside an operating system within uh, in a better way or faster way on Android. Not being as accustomed to Android as I might be with iOS is just faster even on an older device, in terms of my experience, compared to a newer, allegedly faster device. That's what I'm saying. Specs, specs, man, they're good for your face, not for your device. Uh, your experience on said device, That I should, I should clarify that. Faster device is typically a better device, typically, but that doesn't speak to experience all the time. Um, web page scrolling jank. Now I realize this is kind of like, you know, one of those things like, what, Chris, really? Like, yeah, but I need to talk about this. One of the reasons I don't like Google Chrome on the desktop is that it sucks. It, it drops frames like all that. Scrolling sucks on Google Chrome. I, I hate it on OS 10, or not OS 10, Mac OS. It's bad. It's nasty. And it's it, I have yet to see any incremental improvement over time. I don't know if Google's ever going to improve that, honestly. Um, you know, as opposed to me, you know, not scratching my ear because it itches in the middle of a video. I will do my best to improve that over time. Uh, it's nails on a chalkboard to me when I, when I see that. And so I don't like Google Chrome. It runs okay on the Nexus 6P, not great. Compare that to Safari, specifically on iOS 11, and I, I think that Safari is definitely optimized for speed. 
in a way that the, the other parts of the operating system are not. Very rarely do I see anything less than a smooth experience in scrolling in Safari on, uh, on iOS. And that's true. Um, it's been a solid experience. I wish the same experience existed on uh, Google. Now, you could say, uh, or on Android, I should say, with Google Chrome specifically, you could say, well, you can use a third-party browser. I'm like, eh, I know that's the value of Android. You can use third-party default apps, and like, I'll get to that in a bit. Uh, but um, I wish it was just th that it just worked. And it was clean, and it was it was fast, and it was simple. It was as fluid as I've seen the other uh, parts of the operating system be, specifically on on older hardware. Uh, it's gotten better. It definitely has gotten better, but it, it's it's still got a long ways to go. And we're talking just about that 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 Chrome experience versus the Safari experience, specifically on Android uh, versus iOS. Uh, in terms of uh, voice control, uh, I, I like. Uh, um, I like Google Assistant. You can use it on iOS if you want. You should. If you want to, if you want to have your own test, do that. Like, like try asking Siri a question. You know, Siri being the sex panther of iOS, sixty percent of the time it, it works all the time, and I react to sex panther like a lot of people did. Like, ah, what is that horrible? Ah, um, I I hate Siri. I really do. I I gotta say it. There are very few things I hate, but man, that is just. I've, I've been burned one too many times. And I hate basically doing doing a query and, and it throwing back something just in, in like in, insipid. And, and then I post a screenshot to the web and then some jack in and he goes, well, mine worked okay. I'm like, well, I'm not using your device now, am I? Right? This is like, I'm not making this up. This is what it did. Um, you know, I don't need to be proven wrong. These are flat facts. So uh, Google, uh, uh, has, the, 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 the assistant has improved over time, but it certainly, I think, has, has a better foundation with Google than, than Siri has had uh, with, uh, with iOS. I, I just, to me, a big win is not incorporating Siri in any product. And that's not to say that any other uh, artificial intelligent assistant is amazing. I just have found that Google tends to know what it is that I'm asking outright, or it can at least provide the information that I need in response versus um, uh, um, uh, iOS. In fact, there have been times that I'll say, you know, uh, play Christmas in the Stars on YouTube because that's how I might do it on, on iOS. And it doesn't know what to do. I'm like, I'm sorry, I can't, I can't do that. You don't have a subscription. I'm like, but I don't need a subscription to YouTube to play it. So then I'll ask the query again, and then it'll give me a result of video. So like, I ask it the same way, and it just, it, it responds differently on Siri versus Google, which has been a bit more consistent for me. Maybe you've had some variations, but like I said, just try them side by side. You, you may, you may run into a wash, right? You, but you know, it's, it's specifically in how it, it handles something it doesn't understand that I think is the bigger value to that type of assistant. Uh, so right now, Google assistant hasn't upset me to the point that Siri has upset me. I've not been happy with Siri for years. Um, and mind you, I did an interview with the people who made Siri. This is in my, in the channel somewhere long ago. Um, it was acquired by Apple. It was pretty neat back in the day. Um, I, I really liked it back in the day, but I, I, I don't think it's gotten better over time. Um, in terms of the App Store availability, okay, I, let's get beyond the whole, um, well, Apple has all the apps. Well, yeah, in the App Store, sure, but Google Play has got quite a few as well, like, and I'd say that if you just want to accomplish something, you could probably find the app in both stores. In terms of design, okay, honestly, they're about the same anymore. I mean, I like the Google Play layout more than I do, and it's constantly being iterated, than the new App Store layout, which is more of a magazine-style layout. I don't want to read when I go into the App Store. It's not what I want. I, I just want to get to the apps, right, and then get on with life. And now they want to suck me into a magazine. I'm like, ah, uh, Apple. I don't need content everywhere, okay? Uh, is this going to compel me to, to get this app? I don't know. Maybe it will at some point, but right now it's not really for me. Um, I've talked about the performance being really nasty with Google Play on Android, all versions of Android, um, compared to uh, the App Store. The App Store, I think, is, is now rivaled a performance uh, of, of uh, Google Play. They both drop frames pretty uh, regularly, um, either platform. So that, that's a wash uh, as well. And, and and this has just been my experience by and large. And, but I know I'm not the only one to say that about Google Play for sure. I do wonder if anybody else likes the new App Store on iOS. Not me though. I'm not a fan. All right. Uh, in terms of 
default keyboard in, in typing speed. So Gboard, or the Google keyboard, constantly being upgraded and updated uh, versus the iOS keyboard. I, t I can type just about as fast and make mistakes and, and see things corrected, um, uh, you know, pretty much in real time on, on both sides. So I can't say the typing speed was uh, seriously impeded in switching back and forth. You have different uh, you know, gestures and features that you can you know, you tap and hold and, and move up and let go to, to get a special character on, on the Gboard versus iOS and how it works. Uh, so there are different features on both sides, uh, but you know, I, I think I was happier with the Gboard features that, compared to the iOS uh, keyboard features. And I do know you can do third-party keyboards. I've hated all of them on iOS, including Gboard. I'm not, uh, I'm not inclined to use. It just feels tacked on on iOS versus more native on 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 Google or Android, specifically uh, the Android Oreo. Uh, full featured, um, it, configurable, um, easy to use. I mean, it's a keyboard. Um, I like it. I like it a lot, um, a great deal. You can even change the color. I mean, we're talking default keyboard app experiences. Everyone's going to have a different feel for it. But like I said, that's another benefit of, of iOS is that you can run a lot of the Google apps on iOS if you if you so desired. Um, landscape mode. Uh, it's it's usable on uh, on the Android that I the Android device that I've tried it on uh, with Android Oreo. It's clean. It's efficient. It's simple. It's nice. Uh, versus landscape mode on iOS that still doesn't know what the hell it wants to be. Uh, it just it doesn't ever work well. Like when you're in landscape mode, it's fine. You're you're in landscape mode. It's but then as soon as you rotate back, expect a little bit of jank and and slop and just weirdness. Um, I I just don't know if landscape mode has really been fully baked yet. And I think it's going to get worse. I've seen it get worse over time. Or certainly bugs have not been mitigated. People just you know, either don't see these problems, don't have these problems, but it's been documented well enough in my Twitter feed, that is for sure. You know, rotating a device, an iOS device, you know, it, 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 iOS gets confused. I'm like, I don't know what you want. Do you want portrait or landscape? Fine, here's both at the same time. Stop using me. <laughs> so that, that's my impersonation of iOS at that point because it just doesn't know what it wants to do with, with landscape. Um, but, but on this... This device on the, the, the Nexus 6P with, with uh, Android Oreo, it's been fine. It's been clean. Effective. I mean, it's, it works. It's, it's nice. I like it. Uh, if, when I need to use uh, landscape mode, which I don't necessarily use as much as others do, but I don't think a lot of people use landscape mode. But when it's there, I think Google has executed on it in a better way. I think it's baked into the operating system's usability um, in terms of how the app is accommodated on the screen uh, versus iOS, which kind of has been working backwards. You know, iOS used to just be scaled for certain uh, resolutions and certain screens, and now it's allegedly uh, resolution independent, which allows Apple to do different things. But Android's always kind of been, you know, open to different resolutions. Uh, and, and so I think that uh, it, it's it's where Google has matured that code to the, the point where it's, 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 it's become, it's, it is at today, I should say. Um, in terms of dictation and correction, I use dictation all the time, and I find that uh, it responds quicker on the Android device than on iOS. Like when I say responds, I'm, if I'm, I'm going to dictate a sentence right now and then go on with life. I see the words faster on an Android device than I do on iOS. It's like poof, 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 on the same connection, like poof, 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 over and over again. And I fi find that I have to make more corrections, especially the faster I speak, and I'm a fast talker. Um, the, uh, the, the faster I speak, the more corrections I have to make, unless I enunciate very clearly. That's the only way I can dictate with iOS. I need to go to the store later, and that's the only way I can get iOS to do it versus being able to just rattle off the words on, on, on Android and it catch like, you know, most of what I'm saying. And yeah, you have to make corrections every once in a while, uh, but it's absolutely maddening. Uh, with with iOS, I it, it's very difficult. Um, you know, I, I've I've become very skilled at translating when someone's doing something in dictation. It's pretty obvious on the other end, and it's usually pretty obvious when they're using iOS. Not always, sometimes it's telling. Um, I use dictation all the time, and I I find that Google handles dictation a lot better. It's faster, and it's it's it, it requires fewer corrections. It still does require corrections, but but fewer corrections by and large in my experience. Uh, camera app. So, you know, they're both pretty full featured, but the thing I like about the, the, the default camera app, the Google photos app or the camera, sorry, Google camera app on the Nexus 6P is that it, uh, uh, it remembers my HDR setting versus on iOS P 
period, it never remembers my HDR setting. I shoot pretty much all my photos if I can in HDR. Like, I j it's just not even a question. I, I like having that high dynamic range just in case. Uh, it's never, to me, really diminished the photo that much that I couldn't uh, address in post. You know, I want all the details in the photo. Um, I always have to toggle it back on in iOS. And I know, though, I, you can tell me, oh, there's a setting in iOS that you just, you say remember settings. It doesn't remember HDR. Ask me how I know. It, it will forget it. Inevitably, it'll forget it. It'll forget it within a minute. Like, you want an HDR? No, no, no. I know better than you. I am the iOS camera app. Trust me. But I don't trust it. <laughs> uh, I, I I know there's a feature now to, to make auto HDR en enabled, but I don't like that. I, I want to know HDR is going to fire. Uh, I can turn on HDR plus automatically and it's, set it and forget it on, on Android. I don't even think about it. It's, just, it's a done deal. I love that. I really appreciate it. Um, it's just having that nice little feature that I just don't have to worry about it ever again. And, and unfortunately, iOS doesn't always think things all the way through in that way, especially in these smaller, you know, uh, components of an operating system. It's, it speaks to the, the, the problem of death by a thousand cuts. And I'm sure people have had bad experiences with Android too. I'm talking about my experience with this particular version of Android on this particular device versus that particular version of iOS on that particular device or versions on those devices, I should say. Uh, but that's a big deal that, that, that I can save that setting and it just remembers, it knows what I want. In terms of icon consistency, in terms of shapes, uh, this launcher that I'm currently using, the default uh, launcher for the next 6P, whatever it is, uh, because you can change launchers, which I know is a big win. If you want to configure your own launcher or if you want to really have a, uh, you sink your teeth into a, a solid launcher, Nova launcher, a lot of people would recommend it. Uh, I don't necessarily use it on the next 6P. I don't feel I need to. But the icon uh, icons that I have on this device, they're different shapes, which is kind of maddening. I'm like, really? I'm like, why can't they all be the same shape? This launcher doesn't have that feature necessarily that forces them all to be circles or squares or squares with rounded corners or triangles or stars or I don't know. Uh, not that I would want triangles or stars, but, uh, you know, future launchers may have that uh, feature baked in. It's just been my experience, you know, with, with this particular version. That can be what I'm saying is they can be addressed in Android that cannot necessarily be addressed in iOS. iOS is a far more has a far more cohesive icon strategy uh, for its apps. Uh, so you know they're all going to have rounded corners. They're all going to be the same shape. You can't necessarily tweak that. Uh, now, speaking of, I believe that uh, uh, a big boon for iOS could very well be enabling third-party launchers, much like they've enabled third-party keyboards and third-party X, Y, and Z that, that might modify the, the system experience uh, for an iOS user. I think a third-party launcher could go a long, long way to helping iOS. I mean, the springboard is just getting long in the, the tooth. Like, it's just, oh, it's, 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 it's iOS. Uh, but see, I don't think Apple's going to change that. And here's why. Because you know an Apple screen when you see it. You don't necessarily know an Android screen when you see it. There's some iOS knockoffs in the Android world. Uh, there, Android can look like anything. So there's no even no guarantee that you're going to look at a screen that's going to be Android because you don't know what it's going to look like. Versus iOS, you just know. And for Apple to change that this late in the game, they might. I don't know. I mean, they did the whole thing with the whole gigantic software, I mean, the hardware nipple, the black hardware nipple on the iPhone 10, wherever it is on your screen, if you're watching it. Unfortunately, this video with the notch somewhere, I can't reach it if it's up there, but I can I can touch it. I can touch your nipple over here, your your big black nipple on your screen right there. You're going to come back. If you buy a 10, you've got to come back to this particular part of the video. You can't screen cap it, though, because the nipple can't be screen capped. It's, it's hardware that the software has to work around. I'm just poking nipples here, the, the big black nipples. Uh, so, yeah, I, just, I had to say that. I, I, I'd like to see that in iOS. I really would. But uh, Google already has that. So I, I find that the, the icon consistency is better on iOS with that launcher. Small detail, but I, I do notice those things. Uh, performance boosts with updates. So this is something that I, I need to speak to as well. Having upgraded iOS, every version, uh, you know, every time they come out with a new one, I upgrade the iOS uh, on that phone. Uh, I, I've spoken to how performance has gotten worse. Other people have said the same thing. It's not psychosomatic. It's really just getting not greater. Uh, but I have now been running three versions of Android on this device, and it has been a better experience every time. I get, I mean, maybe a few new features, but m more than anything, I don't feel the device is getting slower. I don't feel that this is slower than it was two years ago when I got it. I feel it's just as fast, if not maybe a little faster in spots. Now, whether that's psychosomatic, can't tell you. I mean, like I said, I've only just, you know, lightly been using it, but now 
coming back to this uh, coming back to this device two years later and doing this comparison and contrast uh, contrasting with uh, uh, um, with iOS it's it's seemingly more fluid and this this goes back to to, to the, you know everything that I've been saying like you know if, if if your device gets better with those software updates those operating system platform updates I mean you're getting a better experience for something you've already paid for you know versus not you know and that's that's the way we're seeing Apple we have seen Apple over the past few years you know in, in terms of their eye or lack of, of lack of eye for detail or, or quality control uh, the last thing I have on my little list is something that I know is a little funny to, to some of you but but I thought this was really striking it shocked me I uh, I have the Star Wars app I love the Star Wars app it's one of my favorite apps of all time don't ask what the favorite app is it's Star Wars hello um, on iOS this was the case has been the case for a while it just doesn't run well um it's choppy it frame drops i mean it works i mean i can i can tap something and it, it functions but it's always dropping frames and animation and skips and even when you have everything cached it skips on ios ios uh, uh 10 certainly ios 11 absolutely uh the iphone 7 plus the iphone 8 plus ample hardware it really surprised me when i tried the star wars app the on the uh, uh on the nexus 6p with android oreo it's smooth. It is so much smoother. It is like 100% better on the Nexus 6P with Android Oreo than it is uh, compared to, uh, to iOS on the latest iPhone. It's better. So it's the code, right? So it could be the framework that they're using that's more optimized for Android than it is for iOS. That could very well be the case. I'm just sitting here and reporting to you that, wow, I wonder how many other apps I have that work better on Android than they do on iOS. Specifically on older uh, older phones running newer versions of Android compared to newer versions of iOS, I have I have suggested that we've kind of hit a law of diminishing returns uh, in relation to more bang for your buck with uh, with these newer devices from Apple. I believe software performance peaked with uh, the iPhone 6s. The iPhone 6s was probably the last time I ever felt a real speed boost some some kind of tangible speed boost maybe between the six and the six s uh, but the six or the six s was was about the last time that i found the, the hardware to keep up with the software the software to keep up with the hardware where they're running in parallel with one another where you got faster hardware and the software just automatically became better um you know it, it just speaks to that i just i don't know uh if we're going to see that uh, uh that uh what's the word i'm looking for that cycle change uh, reverse itself, uh, but you know that's just where we stand right now. So you know, these are some some of the the basic things that I I just experienced. I'm like, ah, oh, wow, that's kind of different. I got to write that down. Oh, that's kind of wow, that's kind of interesting. Okay, I got to write that down because I was you know kind of going back and forth between the two. Like, could I really get along with an Android device? Like, truly, like the the way that I that I I intend to get along with an Android device. Um, and uh, you know, my answer to that question is yes. I'm I'm ready. Um, I uh, I'm I'm excited for it uh whenever the next one comes however the next one comes uh i don't know what that's going to be i don't know when it's going to be um i know why it's going to be uh i'm, I'm doing this not just for myself uh but i'm bringing you along on this journey i appreciate you joining me i'm doing it for you i'm doing it to benefit have this experience benefit you if you find yourself kind of wondering what the heck is going on is there something better and chris what do you see well you know what i've seen you know what i've been saying for all these years going all the way back uh, you know, things change. Technology changes. Technology evolves. So you can't you can't necessarily hold me to things that I said five years ago about the things that I'm saying today because technology was different five years ago. Technology is now evolved. Hardware's evolved. Software's evolved. Services evolved. Um, you know, I'm I'm very intent on doing uh, pixel comparisons. I'm very sad. I really, legitimately, am sad. I did not get uh, one of the first pixels. I am sad. Uh, probably not going to get one now. Uh, the Pixel Two XL. In my uh, crosshairs, for sure. Uh, very excited about that. So thank you for listening. Uh, thank you for bearing with me in terms of a software experience comparison, a showdown. Uh, if you are interested in the differences between iOS and Android, specifically from my perspective and how it handles one thing on one platform and, and, and the same thing on another, uh, in an unbiased capacity, meaning you know it's not absolutely going to be better on iOS because it doesn't work that way on Android or vice versa, let me know. Uh, I'd be curious to uh, you know address that either potentially in a comment on this video or potentially in a, a live uh, TLDR on the other YouTube channel for live long form videos. Uh, YouTube.com slash locker gnome. A lot of interactivity over there, QA versus these videos, which is just more of a, a talking head. And I apologize for my video production or lack thereof, including my chair, if that's been annoying you. That's not my back. 
Maybe it is. Is that my back? That's Jedi. I know that. I don't know what she said, though. I'm going to get you going. I'm going to get going myself. i got to do the live TLDR now. I love you. I appreciate you. And may the Force be with you. Oh, wait. That wasn't Jedi. That was Wicket.